وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله الذي شرح صدور أوليائه بالإيمان وفتح لهم أبواب النصوص بقواعد البيان وصلى الله وسلم على من أنزل الله عليه الكتاب والميزان وعلى آله وصحابته ومن تبعهم بإحسان أما بعد الأمر The author رحمه الله He comes to another chapter called Al-Amru قال المصنف The author رحمه الله شيخ محمد بن صالح العثيمين He says تعريفه الأمر قول يتضمن طلب الفعل على وجه الاستعلاء مثل أقيم الصلاة وآت الزكاة فقرج بقولنا قول الإشارة فلا تسمى أمرا وإن أفادت معناه وخرج بقولنا طلب الفعل النهي لأنه طلب ترك والمراد بالفعل الإيجاد فيشمل القول المأمور به وخرج بقولنا على وجه الاستعلاء الالتماس والدعاء وغيرهما مما يستفاد من سيغة الأمر بالقرائن The command الأمر The definition of a command is a statement that includes the request of an action by way of a higher authority such as establish a prayer and pay zakat. And what is excluded from our word statement is anything which is not spoken via gestures even if what is meant by is a command. And what is also excluded from our words the request of an action is the prohibition because that is requesting one to leave an action and the intent of an action is to bring it about. And that includes the speech which is commanded to be said. And what is also excluded from our words by way of a high authority is to appeal and supplicate and other such words that have the pattern of a command and through other factors which might be perceived to be a command. The author, rahimahullah, he goes into a chapter known as Al-Amru, command. The chapter of Al-Amru, command, and An-Nahyu, prohibition, is considered to be min a'zami mabahithu al-kalam the biggest chapter of speech so if someone was to ask you what is the biggest chapter in al-kalam the chapter of kalam you would say al-amru wa nahyu commands and prohibitions why because li'anna li'anna nusus al-kitab wa sunnah because the quran and the sunnah are either commandments or prohibitions. وَلِذَلِكَ The great <coughs> scholar, السَّرْخَسِي أَمَا السَّرَخْسِي If you want to say both ways it's said. السَّرْخَسِي الْحَنَفِي He has a kitab known as أُصُولُ السَّرْخَسِي He started his book with الْأَمْرُ وَالنَّهِيُ Commandments and prohibitions. The reason why he chose to start with it is because, as I mentioned, the Qur'an and the Sunnah are either commandments or prohibition. You're either being told to do something or you're told to stay away from something. So this chapter, we can actually say we are now going into Usul al-Fiqh. We can actually say we're really going into the real essence of what Usul al-Fiqh is. And that before this, we were really doing definitions. And we were going into meanings of words. But that now we're going into what Usul al-Fiqh is about. Al-Amru wa nahyu What does Amr mean in the Arabic language? What does it mean in the Arabic language? It means talabu al-fi'l. You're requested to do something. That's the real meaning for it in the language. There are other meanings that the word Amr can mean. And there are three other Arabic usages that the word Al-Amru has in the language. Three other meanings in the Arabic language the word Amr is. The first one is Al-Sha'nu, affairs. And Allah Ta'ala, He said in the ayah, وَمَا أَمْرُ فِرْعَوْنَ بِرَشِيدٍ 
وما أمر هي مزوات وما شأن فرعون برشيد فرعون's affairs was not good was not upright here what is used وما أمر أمر هي مزوات شأن a benefit the أمر that means a شأن the أمر that means a شأن its plural is umur its plural is what umur and the amr which is fi'l talab al fi'li the plural of it is awamir the plural for it is awamir and that's important that you learn it so umur, when you hear it, the singular is amar. Awamir, the singular is amar. But the difference between umur and awamir is that umur, the singular is al sha'nu. Awamir, the singular is al fi'lu, talab al fi'li. The second meaning it has in the Arabic language is al fi'lu, the action. Allah said in the ayah, wa shawirhum fil amri. Wa shawirhum. Consult them, Muhammad. In what? Fil amri ay fil fi'li. Consult them in the action. Because the ayah came in the context of what? The context of the battle of Uhud. Consult them in this action of participating in the doings and the logistics of the battle of Uhud. The third meaning is as-sifa. Attributes and characteristics. The poet, he said, the poet, he said, عزمت على إقامة ذي صباح لأمر ما يسود من يسود. عزمت I made a decision على إقامة to reside ذي صباح it means إلى صباح until the morning لأمر in a attribute in a form in a with with the characteristics ما يسود من يسود. The characteristics of the one who is given leadership. The way I will wait and I will stay will be in the characteristics of مَا يُسَوَّدُ مَنْ يَسُودُ In the characteristics of the one who is given leadership. Meaning, the person who is given leadership, the one who is given leadership, there are characteristics he's chosen for. From his characteristics is forbearance. Patience, you know, diligent. Those are the characteristics he's chosen for, sah. So Azam to I made the decision. Ala iqamatin to reside. Ila sabahin to the morning. Li amrin in a characteristics. Ma yusawadu man yasudu. The characteristics of the one who is given leadership to run and control. So the word li amrin here means sifatin. It means sifatin. That's what it's used in the Arabic language. Istilah al in the definition of the usuliyin, the way that the usuliyin defined it. The usuliyin's definition is as the Sheikh Rahimahullah mentioned, which is qawlun a speech. Qawlun a speech. So we're going to go through each one, each point, inshaAllah ta'ala. The first one is qawlun. Qawlun, the amr is a speech. What isn't a amr? A fi'l cannot be an amr. Any actions cannot show amr. Like if you say something like this to somebody. Even if it benefits you, what the amr benefits you. Because if you say to somebody like this, meaning come here with your finger and your hand, it's a command, but it's not amr. Why? Because it's a fi'l. And a amr is a qawlun, it's a speech. When you say qawlun, it's a jins. So under it falls many things. Qawlun, what falls under it is amar, which is what the author wants. Under it falls a takhir, choice. Falls under it a nahyu, prohibition. Falls under it a dua. Falls under it a iltimas, to appeal. All of them are qawl. All of them are speech. So the author still hasn't pinpointed it. Then he said talab. When he said talab, he got rid of 
One of the five that five we mentioned right now. He got rid of one of the five that we mentioned. What were the five that we mentioned? Amrun. What takhirun. Amr is a, you're commanded, sah? Takhirun is a choice. An nahi prohibition. A dua supplication. An altimas, appealing. Those five, each one has to drop in the definition. When he said qawlun, all five of them are in there. The second one is talab. What leaves? At takhir straight away walks away. At takhir means you're not you're given a choice. You're not requested to do anything. Talab means to be requested, right? Takhir is a what? It's the choice of al fi'lu wa tarku to do something or to leave something. So there's no request here. And an example for that is Hatta ida athkan tumuhum fashuddul wa taqa fa imma man nam ba'du wa imma fida hatta tada'ul hatta tada al harbu o zaraha. This ayah Allah says if you inflicted slaughter upon them, meaning the disbelievers, secure the bonds, the bonds that you put on them when you, you slaughtered them, you fought with them. Now what you did is you took them as captive, right? Allah said, secure the bonds. فَشُدُّ الْوَثَاقَ وَثَاقَ means the bonds. At this moment where you have them as captives, Allah says, فَإِمَّا مَنْ نَمْ بَعْدُ if you want, you can, you can confer favor upon them if you want. You can confer favor upon them. You can bestow favor upon them if you wish to. Or if you wish, you can request for ransom. Here Allah Taala gave the believers the choice. Do you want to favor them? I mean, let them go and let them be and just let them go. Or do you want to take ransom for each one? حَتَّى تَضَعَ الْحَرْبُ أَوْزَارَهَا Until the battle place puts down its burdens, meaning the battle is over. So the ayah, حَتَّى إِذَا أَثْخَنْتُمُوهُمْ فَشُدُّ الْوَثَاقَ فَإِمَّا مَنَّمْ بَعْدُ وَإِمَّا فِي دَعْدُ Because the O oh here is what? Is للتخليل. You have the choice of either favoring them or you have the choice of taking ransom. This is not talab. Because you're given the choice. It's not a talab. Then the author said, talabu. But what's still inside here? An nahi was a talab. A dua is a talab. Al iltimas is a what? A talab, sah? The second part comes. So the five, which one dropped only so far? Only tahir dropped. Hayye, fi'lin. Qawlun yatadammanu, talab al fi'li. Fi'l here is what? To do something. What dropped here? A nahi you dropped. Because the nahi you're not told to do something. You're not requested to do an action. What are you told not to do an action? صح? So it's not talabu fi'lin, it's talabu tarkin. Nahi is a talabu tark. You're requested to leave something in the nahi. And the amari you're requested to? To do something. Okay. Here I want to benefit you something which is, is fi'l, Here, does all of the forms of nahi drop out of it? Or the only type of nahi that gets out of that definition is the la taf'al version only? Because nahi comes in many forms, right? Which one is the one that drops here? All of the forms of prohibitions? Or is it a particular form of prohibition? Some of the scholars, they said, it's the only one which is Fi'il Amal is what? If'al, right? Fi'il Amal is what? If'al, do! They said the only one that leaves that is not all, all form of prohibitions. It's the The La Taf'al, don't do. They said La Taf'al. Because when Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala He said in the ayah Ijitanibu kathira min adhani Stay away from Many of doubts. Each ten are what? It's Amr. But you're told to wait, stay away from something. You're commanded to stay away from something. So that's talabu fi'lin. They're requested to do something. What are you requested to do? Leave of something. So they call this talabu fi'lin at 
So till now they said that form hasn't left the definition. Another example is when Allah Taala said, "Fa'tazilu nisaa fil mahiyyi." Stay away from the women when, when, whilst they're on their menses. Stay away from them. Meaning, don't have any intimate, don't have any sexual intercourse with them. Fa'tazilu nisaa. Fa'tazilu is a fi'il amr. It's a amr. But here is talabu fi'lin. You're requested to do something by leaving it off. Da'ma yaribuka ila ila ma la yaribuka is an example of that as well. So they said, talabu fi'lin, the only one that leaves it is an nahyu bisigati la taf'al only. That's the only one that drops. Because that one, they said that form is not talabu fi'lin. You're not requested to leave something. You're just told to stay away from something. Does that make sense? That's a benefit that you benefit in more advanced book. Ala wajhi isti'la. The author said, ala wajhi isti'la. Ala wajhi isti'la, I want you to ponder here. So this is a very important message here. There's a very important point here, which is, ala wajhi isti'la, ama ala sifat isti'la, it means, talabu al-uluwi wa takallufi. Talabu isti'la means, the person he says it, when he requests this person to do something, he requests it in a form, in a manner, which gives him superiority. He does it in a supreme form, if that makes sense. That's what it means, isti'la. He doesn't say, please, can you do this? He doesn't say that. He says, do this. Does it make sense? This is the difference between ala wajhi al-isti'la in some books that you see and ala wajhi al-ulu. There's a difference between ala wajhi al-isti'la and ala wajhi al-ulu. Ala wajhi al-isti'la means you're looking at the way it was said. Raji'un ila al-kalami. It goes back to the speech and the way that the person says it. It doesn't, look, doesn't matter who the person is and his level and his rank. It's how he asks that makes it an Amr. And that's the author's choice here right now. Does that make sense? The second way is ala wajhi al Some scholars would say. Ala wajhi al means it's not necessarily how the person says it, but it's the position the person's in when they're saying it. In other words, if a slave says it to his master and he says, do this, it's never considered to be an Amr. Because what is ala wajhi al means he has to be high. So this is raji'un ila al It goes back to the one who's speaking. So if a uh, s- uh, master says to his slave, stand, what is it called? Amar. Based on that one, ulu, right? But if the slave says it to his master, is it called Amar? Based on this, if we look at ulu. If a slave says to his master, qum. No, it's not an Amr. Why? Because the slave is low and the master is high. But the Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin's one is not that. Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin's one is not. He's not looking at whether it's a master or a slave. No, it's how he says it. It's how he says it. So all you just need to know is al isti'la, it goes back to sifatun raji'atun lil kalami. The isti'la is a characteristic and an attribute that goes back to the speech. Whereas the ulu is a sifatu raja'atu lil mutakallimi. It goes back to the one who's speaking. Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin is saying, whether it's an amr or not, we don't look at the one who's saying, we look at both. So we don't look at what he's saying, we don't look at, sorry, the one who's saying it, we look at how he's saying it. If he says qum, then it's an amr. But if he puts arju, I hope, Ma'as'aluka, I ask you, that takes away from it ulu, superiority, then it's not an amr. Whether he's a slave or a master, it doesn't matter. The second view is, no, it matters. We look at who's saying it. And the strongest opinion is that the muhaqqin al-usulin, and this needs more niqash, is that both conditions need to be there. It has to be ulu and isti'la. When we say ulu and isti'la, what is it that leaves the discussion? Amalistic to isti'la. 
When we say ala wajh al isti'la from the five what leaves? Al dua and al timas. Because anahi already left. The only two that was outstanding was what? Al dua and al timas. Al dua means supplication and al timas means what? Appeal. Those are the two that leave. Al timas is when you, can, when you intercede for somebody or, or you, you appeal. Because al timas comes from min, min al musawi, two equal people. Iltimas is two equal people. It's like a brother saying to his another brother, Ishtari lana ta'aman zakiyan. Tell us, you know, buy for us a good food. That's not amr. Because uh, iltimas is equal. Dua is what? Uh, it's not ala wajil isti'la. He's a low rank person. What is he? He's a rank. Because dua comes from a low person to a higher one. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the slaves. They ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we say to Allah, Rabbi, habli min ladunka dhurriyatan tayyibatan, innaka anta al-wahab. When a person says that, Rabbi, hab, hab is a fi'il amr. You're commanding Allah Azza wa Jalla. Is that what you're going to say? Is that going to say amr? No, we say dua. Why? Raji'atun lil mutakallimi. We're looking at the one who's speaking. Naam. Then the author says, siyahu al-amr, arba'ah. فعل الأمر مثل أتل ما أوحي إليك من الكتاب اسم فعل أمر اسم فعل الأمر مثل حي على الصلاة المزدر النائب عن فعل الأمر مثل فإذا لقيتم الذين كفروا فضرب الرقاب المضارع المقرون بلام الأمر مثل لتؤمنوا بالله ورسوله وقد يستفاد طلب الفعل من غير صيغة الأمر مثل أن يوصف بأنه فرض أو واجب أو مندوب أو طاعة أو يمدح فاعله أو يذم تاركه أو يترتب على فعله ثوابا أو يترتب على فعله ثواب أو على تركه عقاب. forms of command the forms of the command are four number one the imperative verb such as recite O Muhammad what has been revealed to you of the book. Number two, the imperative verbal noun, such as come to the prayer from the Adhan. Number three, the verbal noun that is used in place of the imperative verb, such as so when you meet those who disbelieve in battle, strike their necks. Number four, pres present tense verb joined with the lamb of imperative, such as to believe in Allah and his messenger. Commands can also be understood using other than the normal forms as mentioned above, such as something being described as fard, wajib, mandub, or obedience, or praising the perpetrator, disparaging the one who leaves it, or when a reward is connected to it, or that to leave it would be punishable. The author, rahimahullah, now he goes into the forms of commands, the forms in which it comes in. The Shaykh, rahimahullah, he divides the Siyagul Amr, the forms of commands into two. Into two. The first one is As-Sariha direct. And he mentions four of them, which are direct. And then he mentions nine which are indirect. Nine forms which are Ghayru Sariha that are not direct. Nine of them. The Amr is very important for a person to understand it. Asiyahul Amr here al fadhu dalatu alayhi. The Amr, the wordings that are in it, show the Amr. When you say Utlu, read. That Utlu shows the commands. That's important. And that the Amr has forms that are specific to it. The Amrs have what? Forms that are specific to it. And this is in opposition to the Asha'ira, who believe that the Amr don't have forms. The Amr, it doesn't have forms. And that the Amr is a meaning that is present within the person's soul. 
like the prohibitions. So they will say, for example, do this, and things like that, they are not Amr, but they are the indications of an Amr. That's what they say. The reason why. We already know that the Sha'ira, what do they believe? Ithbatul kalam in nafsi. They believe the speech does not come out from Allah Azza wa Jalla. And the only time that the speech can be known whether it's a commandment or a prohibition is when? When can you know it? Is when it comes out. So since the speech hasn't come out and it's within Allah Azza wa Jalla, how do you determine when it's a commandment and when it's a prohibition? So for that reason, they said that there is no form for commandments and there is no form for prohibitions. And that's a mas'ala mabhah that you study more in details in Qutub al-Itiqad. The best kitab that spoke about it in the first volume, page 106 to 108, is Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah in his kitab Dar'u Ta'arud al-Aql wa al-Naql. And also in his kitab al-Iman, page 108 to 110, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. This concept of um, al-Amr wa nahyu does it have a sigha takhussuhu, specific forms in which it comes to in? And how he debunks the argument of the Asha'ira. Let's quickly go over the four forms that the author rahimahullah mentioned, which were di direct and clear, and then we'll mention the ones that he the nine that he mentioned which are not direct. The first one is Fi'il Amr. Fi'il Amr, which you should study in Arabic grammar, is like Allah's statement, Utlu ma uhiya ilayka min kitabi rabbika wa aqimi salah. Surah Al Ankabut, Ayah 45. Allah says, Utlu, read. The second one is Surah Al Hazab. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, what did he say? So here we said, Utlu ma uhiya ilayka min rabbi, it utlu ma uhiya ilayka min al kitabi wa aqimi salah, and establish the prayer. So we have two commandments in that verse. Fi'il Amr. Another ayah is in Surah Al Hazab, Ayah 70. Allah says, Ya ayu al-ladhina amanu taqu allaha wa qulu qawlan sadeeda. Ya ayu al-ladhina amanu taqu allaha wa qulu qawlan sadeeda. So we have four words that we took from the two verses. Utlu ma uhiya ilayka min al-kitabi wa aqimi salah. Utlu and wa aqimi salah. Ya ayu al-ladhina amanu taqu allaha wa qulu and say qawlan sadeeda. Four words. Utlu, aqim, ittaqu and qulu. And this form, fi'lu amr, they call it Ummu Sikh, the mother of all the forms. Fi'l Amr is the strongest form. Ifal is the strongest form. The second one is Ismu Fi'l Amr. What is a Ismu Fi'l Amr? What is a Ismu Fi'l Amr? Remember when we studied Mutamimmat uh, Al-Jurumiyah, what did we say? That the Amr has two conditions. The first one was what was the two conditions that the Fi'l Amr had? دَلَلَتُّ عَلَى الطَّلَبْ وَقَبُولِهِ يَا الْمُؤَنَّثَةِ الْمُخَاطَبَةِ صح? So it's two things. The first one was what? دَلَلَتُّ عَلَى الطَّلَبْ That it shows a command. صح? And the second one is وَقَبُولِهِ And that it will accept if we need to add to it. يَا الْمُؤَنَّثَةِ الْمُخَاطَبَةِ صح? قُمْ قُمِ We can say that if we wanted to. صحيح? That's a fi'il amr. Lakin if it doesn't accept ya al mu'annathat al mukhataba is called the ismu fi'il amr. It's called a what? It doesn't accept it. So that's the main points. And there are other things that some scholars mentioned. For example, um, statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa yahya لِيَهْلِكَ مَنْ لِيَهْلِكَ مَنْ هَلَكَ عَنْ بَيِّنَةٍ وَيَحْيَا مَنْ حَيَّ عَنْ بَيِّنَةٍ The word حَيَّ is a fi'l maadhin. It came from the word حَيِّيَ حَيِّيَ it came from. حَيِّيَ أَمَا حَيَّ عَلَى الصَّلَاةِ That's what they say, right? So I don't know why I brought the ayah. لِيَهْلِكَ مَنْ هَلَكَ عَنْ بَيِّنَةٍ وَيَحْيَا مَنْ حَيَّا That حَيَّا is a fi'il ba'di, it's not a fi'il amr, sorry. Because it came from the word حَيَّا. It's a mistake I did. I confused it with حَيَّا عَلَى الْفَلَحْ. حَيَّا عَلَى الصَّلَحْ. That's a fi'il, it's a fi'il amr. Just to, I wanted to distinguish one from the other. 
The third one is al masdar al naib al munab al amr. The masdar, the verbal noun that's sitting in the place of the fi'l amr. It's sitting in its place. Like Allah Tabarak Ta'ala's statement, فَإِذَا لَقِيْتُمُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فَضَرْبَ الرِّقَابِ فَضَرْبَ الرِّقَابِ فَضَرْبَ الرِّقَابِ يضرب الرقابة. He'd smack them on their necks. فالضرب is a, is, 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 is a مزدر. لكن it's sitting in the place of a فعل أمر. فناظرات إلى ميسرة. Allah says. So the first ayah. فإذا لقيتم الذين كفروا فضرب الرقاب is in سورة محمد آية 4. The سورة البقرة آية 280. Allah says. فناظرة إلى ميسرة. فناظرة. فناظرة is a مزدر. فناظرة. فَنَذِرَةٌ is what? Like wait. Also, سُورَةُ الْمُجَادَلَةِ أما سُورَةُ الْمُجَادِلَةِ You can say in both ways. مُجَادَلَةَ or مُجَادِلَةِ You can say both ways. Ayah 3. Allah says, فَتَحْرِيرُ رَقَبَةٍ فَتَحْرِيرُ That's a مَزْدَر نَائِبْ عَنِ الْفِعْلِ الْأَمَرِ Sitting in the place of فِعْلِ الْأَمَرِ فَصِيَامُ ثَلَاثَةِ أَيَّامٍ فَصِيَامُ is a مَزْدَر that's taking the place of a فعل عمر those are the forms the fourth type is فعل المضارع المقترن بلام الأمر the فعل عمر which is المقرون بلام الأمر the لام الأمر is connected to it the الشيخ رحمه الله تعالى he gave an example which is لتؤمنوا بالله ورسوله believe in Allah and his messenger but some of the copies and I'm guessing your copy probably has that. Does it say Surah Al-Majadil, Ayah 4? That is incorrect. Because that ayah, لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتِلْكَ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ وَلِلْكَافِرِينَ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ That's the ayah in there, right? That lam, لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ That lam is not lam amrin, it's lam al-ta'aleel. Ah. So the shaykh didn't use, that's not the correct. The shaykh is referring to his own per example. His own example. And that's why he placed it in brackets. Is it in brackets for you? لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ It's originally in brackets. عَلَى كُلِّ حَالِ The author's one, the example for it is the example he gave which is لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Believe in Allah and His Messenger. But not لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتِلْكَ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ Because the one that in the ayah is not the amr. It's a ta'aleel. So you can believe in Allah wa ta'ala. That's what it means. Um, وليكتب, وليكتب بينكم كاتب بالعدل That is example for the Sheikh وليكتب أما وإذا كنتم فيهم فأقمت لهم الصلاة فلتقم طائفة منهم معك وليأخذوا أسلحتهم فإذا سجدوا فليكونوا من ورائكم ولتأتي طائفة أخرى لم يصلوا فليصلوا معك وليأخذوا حضرهم وأسلحتهم أما ده حديث الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم وإذا شك أحدكم فليتحرى الصواب. If one of you is in a state of doubt, then let him let him verify and come with the best of him. فليتم عليه أن لا يمكن بليتت. ثم ليسجد سجدتين and then he should do two sujuds. So what did the Prophet said? فليتحرى فليتحرى. That lam is what? It enters the fi'l mudari and it's a lam al-amri. And ولي ولي ذلك دهالات. Remember that time they couldn't distinguish between. Ha, فليفرحوا. And the difference between the fi'l amr, the fi'l amr is a whole different situation. Ah, good. Those are the four types which are sariha, direct. Now we're going to go into the sirah til amri ghayr al sariha, the the forms which are indirect. And the author mentioned, rahimahullah taala, nine of them. He mentioned nine of them. The first one is the act is referred to and it's used by the word fard. And you'll suffer bi anna fardun. That's the first one. That the act is described to be fard. For example, the example for that would be the hadith al-Imam al-Bukhari narrated in hadith Anas ibn Malikin when it came to the ansab al-zakat, the amount for the zakat. And Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu katab lahu, wrote to him, and then he said to him, هذه فريضة صدقتي. هذه فريضة صدقة. This is the obligation of صدقة. 
التي فرضها رسول الله that the messenger made it obligatory على المسلمين on the Muslims والتي أمر الله بها رسوله and Allah commanded his messenger so the prophet Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and who wrote it that letter and he sent it out and in there what did he say هذه فريضة الصدقة التي فرض الله التي فرض رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم على المسلمين والتي أمر الله بها رسوله the second one is to be described and يوصف بأنه واجب that it said it's واجب an example for that is غص غسل sorry غسل الجمعة showering on Friday واجب it's obligatory على كل محتلم on everyone who has reached age of puberty Number three is أن يوصف بأنه مكتوب To be said that this is مكتوب to, to, be, to be described to be مكتوب Like Allah said كتيب عليكم القتال وهو كره لكم أما كتيب عليكم الصيام كما كتيب على الذين من قبلكم كتيب The word كتيب shows obligation كتيب means it is made obligatory on you and mandatory on you أن يوصف بأنه مندوب also, to be said that this is mandub. Example for that is Nadaba Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nasi yawm al-khandaq Fantadaba al-zubayr Thumma nadabahum fantadaba al-zubayr Thumma qala Rasulullah Then the messenger said Likulli nabiyin hawariyun wa hawariy al-zubayr Ibn al-awam The word nadb Nadb according to the early is meant wajib An yusuf bi anna u ta'a to be referred to as that obedience. It's described to be obedience. كقوله تعالى the statement of Allah من يطع الرسول فقط أطاع الله من يطع الرسول فقط أطاع الله Obedience here. It means it's amr. أن يمدح فاعله The one who does it is praised. أن يمدح فاعله The one who does it is praised. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم did he say in the hadith أحب عبادي Hadith Al-Qudsi That Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala said what? Ahabu ibadi the slaves that are most beloved to me are what? Ilayya a'ajaluhum fitran The ones who hasten the fitrah They're the most beloved ones to me That's a amr Because the one who's doing it is being praised Number seven is An yudamma tarikuhu The one who is Leaving it off Is critiqued and criticized And scolded the Prophet ﷺ said, "Inna al-rifqa la yakunu fi shayin illa zanahu. Gentleness is not in a matter except it beautifies it. Wala yanzau min shayin illa shanahu. And gentleness is not stripped from a matter except that it makes it unappealing." Number eight, an yataratab ala fi'lihi thawab. Doing it, reward will come from it. Or yataratab ala fi'lihi thawab. Doing it, you get reward for it. When the Prophet said, "Al-umratu ila al-umrati kafaratu lima bainouma wal hajj al-mabrur leis lahu jazaun ila al-janna." Umratu umra is an expiation. Lima bainouma, that which is between it. Wal hajj al-mabrur, a hajj which is mabrur. Hajj al-mabrur means a hajj where the person doesn't go against Allah's command. Leis lahu jazaun. There's no other reward for it illa al-jannah. And Al-Imam al has an explanation on that as well. Number nine is أو يترتب على ترك عقاب Leaving it, a punishment is for you. The Prophet said, من اقتضى حق مرؤ مسلم بيمينه فقد أوجب الله له النار فقد أوجب الله له النار وحرم عليه الجنة فقال رجل وإن كان شيئا يسيرا يا رسول الله قال then the prophet said وإن كان قبيصا من أراك the prophet said anyone who takes on the rights of his Muslim brother unlawfully he takes the rights of his Muslim and he takes it by making an oath be a meanie he said والله and he unlawfully takes the wealth and the rights of his Muslim brother فَقَدْ أَوْجَبَ اللَّهُ لَهُ النَّارَ Allah made it ordained and promised for him the hellfire. وَحَرَّمَ عَلَيْهِ النَّارَ 
وحرم عليه الجنة سوري أن الله ما يجنة حرام from him فقال رجل الأمان سيد يا رسول الله أو مسجد الله وإن كان شيئا يسير even if it's something little that he took the prophet said وإن كان قبيصا من أراكل even if it's a toothpick even if it's a what a toothpick something small then the author رحمه الله he said ما تقتضيه صيغة الأمر صيغة الأمر عند الإطلاق تقتضي وجوب المأمور به والمبادرة بفعله فورا فمن الأدلة على أنها تقتضي الوجوب قوله تعالى فليحذر الذين يخالفون عن أمر أن تصيبهم فتنة أو يصيبهم عذاب أليم وجه الدلالة أن الله حذر المخالفين عن أمر الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم أن تصيبهم فتنة وهي الزيغ أو يصيبهم عذاب أليم والتحذير بمثل ذلك لا يكون إلا على ترك واجب فدل على أن أمر الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم المطلق يقتضي وجوب فعل المأمور ومن الأدلة على أنه للفور قوله تعالى فاستبقوا الخيرات والمأمورات الشرعية خير والأمر بالاستباق إليها دليل على وجوب المبادرة ولأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كره تأخير الناس كره تأخير الناس أما كره تأخير الناس كره تأخير الناس ما أمرهم به من النحر والحلق يوم الحديبية حتى دخل على أم سلمة رضي الله تعالى عنها فذكر لها ما لقي من الناس ولأن المبادرة بالفعل أحوط وأبرأ والتأخير له آفات ويقتضي تراكم الواجبات حتى يعجز عنها What, what the wording of a command necessitates The command when not restricted by other factors necessitates the obligation of what is being commanded and immediately carrying it out From the evidences that it necess necessitates obligation is diverse so that those beware who dissent from the Prophet's order lest fitna strike them or a pain for punishment The significance of this verse is that Allah has warned those violators of the commands of the Prophet وسلم, to beware of a fitna befalling them which is a deviation or that a painful punishment strike them such a warning can only be for leaving something which is obligatory all of this indicates that the general commands of the Prophet ﷺ must be acted upon from the evidence that it is to be carried out straight away is the verse so race forward in doing good deeds and the things that are enjoined by the Sharia are good and the order to race towards good is a proof of the obligation to rush to do good deeds And the Prophet ﷺ disliked the fact that the people delayed the sacrifice and shaving of their heads on the day of Hudaybiyah until he met Umm Salama anha and told her what had happened with the people. Also, rushing to do the good action is from being more cautious and righteous and delaying would result in problems leading to the accumulation of duties which the person is then in turn unable to carry out. The author rahimahullah here He goes into a mas'ala that the usuleen call dalalatul amri al-mutlaq. Mas'alatul dalalatul amri al-mutlaq. What does the unrestricted command indicate? This is one of the most beneficial, rather min ahammi mas'ail al-amr. This chapter of amr, the most important thing is this issue. The commandment The unrestricted commandment, pay attention to this. What does it indicate? And the us, us, scholars, they look at it from two angles. How many angles do they look at it from? Two angles. The first one is, Dalalatul Amri ala hukmil ma'muri bihi. The unrestricted commandment, the unrestricted commandment, in terms of the thing that you're commanded to do, When you're commanded to do it, what does it show? Does it show that you have to do it? Or does it show that you have the choice to do it? That's the first thing that we're going to look at. We're going to look at it from two angles. The first angle is the Amr, the commandment, in which the thing that you're commanded to, to do. Allah says, Aqeemu salah, establish the prayer. You're being commanded to do something. That unrestricted command, does it show that you have to do it or otherwise? 
Remember, we're talking about the unrestricted command, that we're not talking about a restricted one to a particular situation, because the one that's restricted, it will be taken to whatever is restricted to. If there's a qareena in there that shows that it's a, you don't have to do it, then that's a qareena. We're going to give that example, inshallah ta'ala. But here we're talking about al-amrul mutlaq. In both of the situations that we're going to mention, this one and the next example, the next point that we're going to mention, Hope this point is understood. Okay, the authors of the opinion, when you see an unrestricted command from the Quran and the Sunnah, you have to do it. And he's basing on the argument which is an al amr al mutlaq yaqtadil wujub. That the unrestricted commandment from the Quran and the Sunnah shows obligation. That's his opinion. Now, what's his evidence? His evidence is the statement of Allah, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu taqullaha wa dharu ma baqiya min al-riba in kuntum mu'mineen. Fa illam taf'alu fa'adanu bi harbim min Allahi wa rasooli. And, no, the, uh, sorry, the evidence that Shaykh Rahimahullah brought, sorry, he didn't mean that evidence. The evidence that the Shaykh brought is, فَلِحَذَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِ أَنْ تُصِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةٌ أَوْ يُصِيبَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَلِيمٌ. This is the evidence that the Shaykh brought. Let them be cautious, the ones who are opposing an amrihi, the Prophet's command. An amrihi, the command of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And to see them, two things are going to happen to them. And to see them, fitna, fitna is going to happen to them. What does fitna mean? here mean? Shirk. Shirk, Imam Ahmed said that. That's the tafsir of Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah. Um, but the author here, rahimahullah, he gave it a general meaning than shirk. What did he say, Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin? He, he said, وَهِيَ الزَّيْغُ زَيْغ He means, he said, زَيْغ is deviation, which is no doubt, shirk is the greatest form of The second thing that the ayah mentioned is what? فَلِيَحْذَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِي The one who goes against the Prophet's command, and Allah's command, what is going to happen to them? أَنْ يُصِيبَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ A severe punishment will befall them. So if the commandment of Allah did not show obligation, why would fitna happen to us? And why would a severe punishment come? If it didn't show obligation. That's the Sheikh's argument. The only reason why those two great serious warnings will come is that the person left a what? Wajib. Because wajib is what the person who doesn't come with it deserves to be punished. صح? So that's the author's istidlal of the ayah. And this is the ayah, to be honest, used by the overwhelming majority of those scholars who say that the unrestricted command benefits obligation. That's what they say. You can see this in Al-Bahr Al-Muhit and Nashr Al-Bunud and Nihayat Al-Sul and Rawdat Al-Nadhir and Jannat Al-Munadhir and Usul Al-Sarkhasi and other books like that in Usul Al-Fiqh, they talk about it. This is the unrestricted command here we're talking about. But the restricted command. This restricted command, it can show this and it can show that. It can show both. It can. For example, when the Prophet said, Sallu qabla al-maghribi. Sallu qabla al-maghribi. Pray before maghrib. Pray before maghrib. And then after that, what did he say? He said, liman sha, whoever wishes. This commandment, it got, there's a qareena in there that it doesn't show obligation. Okay? There's a qareena in there that shows that it's not a... That is not an obligation. Also, the ayah of Allah, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, Ya ayyuh ladheena amanu, those of you who believe, ittaqu allaha, have taqwa of Allah Azza wa Jalla, wadharu ma baqiya min al-riba, in kuntum mu'minina, fa illam taf'alu. What did Allah say? Remain, stay away from riba. Okay? The command here, right, is to stay away from riba, true or false. Is it obligatory? Ha, it's obligatory. But there's a qareena that showed it's obligatory, which is what? فَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا فَأَذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِ That's the ayah showed that it's obligation. Because Allah said, if you don't do that, then remember that you have proclaimed a war with Allah Azza wa Jalla. You are now in direct war with Allah Azza wa Jalla. صح? So this is when we're not talking about this kind of command. You can't use this ayah or you can't use this hadith because each one has, there's a qareena in it that shows whether it's wajib or a qareena that shows which is, it's not wajib. We're talking about al-amr al-mutlaq. This is the Shaykh's opinion. Now we want to ask a question. 
What's the benefit in this discussion? Whichever of the opinions we take, what benefit does it have? There's a furu' alati banat ala hadi al-qa'ida. There's sub-branches that are, that are going to be built upon this qa'ida usuliya. Based on this qa'ida, which is anna al-amr al-mutlaq yaqtadi al-wujub. If you take that opinion, okay, then a lot of things are going to come into place for you. For example, when the messenger said, إِذَا شَرِبَ الْكَلْبُ فِي إِنَاءِ أَحَدِكُمْ فَلِيَغْسِلْهُ سَبْعًا If the dog drinks from one of your vessels or your utensils, what did the Prophet said? فَلِيَغْسِلْهُ Wash it سَبْعًا How many times did he say wash it? Does it show obligation or not? Because فَلِيَغْسِلْهُ is Amr and it's an unrestricted Amr, it's Amr al-Mutlaq. Okay? That's the question now. If you took that Qa'idah, then you should say yes, it's obligatory. Number two, Takbiratul Ihram, in the Salah, does it show obligation? Based on the hadith of the Prophet, إِذَا قُمْتَ If you stand up, this is talking to al Musi'u Salatahu, the man who didn't perfect his prayer, that the Prophet was teaching how to pray. Then what did the Prophet say to him? إِذَا قُمْتَ If you stand up إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ for the prayer, what did he say? فَكَبِّرْ فَكَبِّرْ is an Amr, right? An Amr, unrestricted Amr, what does it benefit? So this point is very vital because sometimes, you know what you see some people do in the Salah? They go and they start from the sujood straight away without even saying Allahu Akbar, Takbirat al-Ihram. So if you believe أَنَّ الْأَمْرَ الْمُطْلَقِ يَقْتَضِ الْوُجُوبِ فَكَبِّرْ You have to say Allahu Akbar first and then you have to do that. If you don't, there's a Masala Akhar. A jihad, the second direction that the author Rahimullah spoke about this concept which is Dalalatu al Amr al Mutlaq, the indication of the Amr al Mutlaq. The second question is the Amr al Mutlaq, the unrestricted Amr, does it indicate that it has to be done straight away or can you delay it? Does it show al Fawriya or does it show al Tarakhi? Again, we are talking about al Amr al Mutlaq, the unrestricted command. The unrestricted? The unrestricted command. Because the restricted command takes whatever it's restricted to. For example, if a parent says to his son, Qum an Stand up now. Qum is an Amr. Unrestricted command. Al-an is Qarina. Qayyadahu. It restricted it. What did it restrict it to? Now. So this is, this is, not, your, this is not the discussion. Amma Qum al Stand up today. So he's got any time within today he can stand up. This is Taraqi, he can delay it if he wishes to. We're not talking about if there's an external Qareena in the text. We're talking about a unrestricted commandment. Does it show al fawriya or does it show a Taraqi? Do does it show that you have to do it straight away? Or does it show that you don't? The author, rahimahullah, and many of the usuliyin are of the opinion and al-amr al-mutlaq, the unrestricted commandment, it indicates al fawru straight away. Wujub al-mubadara. The person has to hasten by doing that action fi awwali azminatil imkan. The first able time that the person can do it. And the author, rahimahullah, he used three things as evidence. Shaykh Muhammad ibn Salih al Uthaymeen, he used three arguments. The first one he used is the ayah from the Quran, fastabiqu al khayrat. Fastabiqu al khayrat. How did he use fastabiqu al khayrat ayah Surah al Baqarah? The amru al istibaq. Istibaq means hasten to the good. And isn't the ma'murat al shari'ah, are they not good? The commandments of the sharia, are they not good? They are good. So, fayajibu al istibaq ilayha. So, you have to hasten to it. Okay? And the meaning of al fawr, what does it even mean? It means al istibaq, hasten to something. Number two, the Shaykh Rahimahullah brought the argument in the Hudaybiyyah, the incident of al Hudaybiyyah, where the Prophet وسلم, he disliked. The delaying of the people when he commanded them وسلم, to slaughter and to shave their hair. And then he entered onto his wife Umm Salama and he told her what he encountered from the people. And she told him that he should shave his hair first. So why was the Prophet upset is that when he commanded them they didn't want to do it straight away. So فَدَلَّ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ أَمْرَهُ لِلْفَوْرِ That shows that his commandment is for what? Straight away. And if it was permissible to, to do a tarakhi, to delay, he wouldn't have disliked the action of the companions when they delayed it. The third point that the Shaykh Rahimahullah 
used and the third argument that he used is he said another was sahih the correct observation the logic the rational mind pushes this because when you hasten to something it, the benefits are fulfilled straight away whereas if you delay something there might be a chance that you may not be able to do it in the uh, in the future you know you may not even you not might you might not be able to do it for example you might become sick or you might die or whatever that may make it hard for you to fulfill the obligatory act it may even be hard for you to do it and the sharia what did it come to do to do what is beneficial and to push away what is harm wa shari'atu ja'at bi jalb al masalih wa takmilha wa dar al mafasid wa taqlilha sharia came to bring about the good and to complete it and to push away the harm or lessen it so this shows that the great maslaha is to do it straight away because number one tabra'u bihi dhimma your neck is going to be free from obligation you're free you see and delaying it is it not a harm in the sense where um you might become weak you might become sick you might die and get punished for leaving something you could have done and etc ala kulli hal from this they took that anna al amr al mutlaq yaqtadi al fawr that the unrestricted commandment it benefits uh, or it necessitates hastiness the person has to do it straight away um what are the furu' what are the sub branches that are built upon this is this the mere principles that we're talking about or does it actually have applications it has applications for example if the zakat reaches the amount اذا بلغ المال if your wealth reaches the nisab وحال الحول and the yearly cycle went around and the person is able to give it then they should do it straight away because Allah said وآتوا الزكاة give the zakat also hajj the person has the ability to go hajj do they have to go straight away yes because أن الأمر المطلق يقتضي الوجوب. The Prophet when he said يا أيها الناس أو people قد فرض الله عليكم الحج فحجوا. Allah he made it obligatory on you. حج do حج. This commandment means that the person has to do it as soon as they have the ability. The same is وجوب المبادرة بكفارة القتل. If a person kills a person by mistake. the expiation needs to be taken from them or if a person makes a covenant an oath and they break their you mean then again mubadara hastiness wa dhihar a man divorces his wife straight away he has to he can't say i divorced i did i said to my wife you are like the back of my mother but i'll start the fasting inshallah next year i know she's not my wife until i come with the kafara but i'll delay right now i'm not with her anyways no the person is not allowed to delay it. And there are other views that are out there but this is the view that the Shaykh rahimahullah strengthened then the author rahimahullah he said wa qad yakhruju al-amr 'an al-wujub wal fawriyah li dalil yaqtadi dhalik fa yakhruju 'an al-wujub ila ma'an minha an-nadb ka qawlihi ta'ala wa ashhidu idha tabay'atum fa al-amr bil ishhad 'ala at-tabay'i lin-nadb bi dalil anna an-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam اشترى فرسا من اعرابي ولم يشهد الثاني الاباحه واكثر ما يقع ذلك اذا ورد بعد الحذر او وجوبا لما يتوهم انه محذور مثاله بعد الحذر مثاله بعد الحذر قوله تعالى واذا حللتم فاصطادوا فالامر بالاصطياد للاباحه لوقوع بعد الحذر المستفاد من قوله تعالى غير محل الصيد وانتم حرم ومثاله جوابا لما يتوهم انه محذور قوله صلى الله عليه وسلم افعل ولا حرج في جواب من سالوه في حجه الوداع عن تقديم افعال الحج التي تفعل يوم العيد بعضها على بعض الثالث التهديد كقوله تعالى اعملوا ما شئتم انه بما تعملون بصير فمن شاء فليؤمن ومن شاء فليكفر ان اعتدنا للظالمين نارا فذكر الوعيد بعد الامر المذكور دليل على انه للتهديد 
ويخرج الأمر عن الفورية إلى التراخي مثال قضاء رمضان فإنه مأمور به لكن لكن دل لكن دل الدليل على أنه للتراخي فعن عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها قالت كان يكون علي الصوم من رمضان فما أستطيع أن أقضيه إلا في شعبان وذلك لمكان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ولو كان التأخير محرما ما أقرت عليه عائشة It may be that an obligatory act may not require to be carried out immediately due to an evidence which requires it. In such cases, it is removed from being an obligation to meaning something else, such as number one recommended. For example, when you, for example, when you buy and sell, have it witnessed. The command to have the buying and selling witness is for preference according to the evidence that the Prophet ﷺ brought a horse from a Bedouin and did not have it witnessed. Number two, al-ibaha, permissible, often occurring after a warning or in reply to what may be perceived as prohibited. An example of this occurring after a prohibition is the verse, but when you come out of ihram, then you may hunt. The command to go hunting is one of permissibility because it is mentioned after the warning as is deduced from the verse, hunting not being permit, permitted while you are in the state of ihram. An example of when it is reply to what is perceived to be prohibited is the statement of the Prophet wasallam, do it and there is nothing wrong. In reply to the one who asked during the final hajj about doing the actions of the day of Eid in a different order. Number three, as a threat, as in the statement of the Most High, do what you like, indeed he is ever watchful over what you do. So whoever wishes, then let him believe, and whoever wishes, let him disbelieve. Verily, we have prepared for the unjust a fire. So the warning is mentioned after the command is laid down, proving that it is a threat. The command is removed from an immediate nature to one which can be implemented over time. And an example of what is making up the missed days of Ramadan, because even though it is ordered to be made, the evidence indicates that it can be done over a period of time, as narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha. When I had to make up for the fasting of Ramadan, I would make up for it what I could accept in Sha'ban, and that due to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam station. If the delay was forbidden, then Aisha radiallahu anha would not have confirmed it. The Shaykh rahimahullah, after we spoke about the asal of the Amr, the default position regarding the command, it is that it shows obligation. The unrestricted command in the Quran and the Sunnah, what does it show? It shows, we said the unrestricted command. In the Quran and the Sunnah, it shows obligation. And we also mentioned that it shows that one has to do it immediately. So it shows al-wujub and it also, also shows al-fawriya, that it has to be done immediately. After we have spoken about that, the Shaykh Rahimahullah, he now goes into um, things that can be taken out of that discussion. Things that can be taken out of that discussion. Um, and times when the command is not indicating obligation. It doesn't show obligation. The Shaykh Rahimahullah, he mentioned some. But there are times that he didn't state. Well, Idalika in the book Al Ghaythul Hawami' there are 35 situations. Some scholars, that's the number them they reached it. 35 different situations in which the Amr um, is, not a, uh, is not obligatory. A command is not obligatory. The Shaykh Rahimahullah he mentioned the first one which is a nadb, permissibility. Sometimes the uh, command, it can go towards permissibility. Okay. What are they? Number one, is permissibility. And the example that the Sheikh gave is وَأَشْهِدُوا إِذَا تَبَايَعْتُمْ وَأَشْهِدُوا إِذَا تَبَايَعْتُمْ means take witness when you're buying and when you're selling. وَأَشْهِدُوا 
أشهدوه إذا أمر على سيغتي إفعل It's a command and it's in the form of إفعل Do and that what's the default position regarding a command unrestricted command أنه يحمل على الوجوب that it's taken as a obligation that's the default position لكن صرفه صارف uh, an external evidence diverted it from the default position diverted it from the original rule and that is and the sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the messenger ishtara faras and he brought a horse min arabiyin he took, bought it from a bedouin walam yushhid and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he didn't take a witness he didn't take a he did not take a witness and that then indicated that this is this command وَأَشْهِدُوا إِذَا تَبَيَعْتُمْ إِذْ لِلْإِبَاحَةِ If you want to. Because we brought two evidences together and that's what came out. <coughs> the second thing is الْإِبَاحَةِ The second one is الْإِبَاحَةِ The first one was what? And Nedbu. And Nedbu doesn't show, sorry, and Nedbu is not permissibility. Sorry. And Nedbu is recommendation. That is recommended. The first one, it shows that it's recommended. Okay. But the second one is uh, Al Ibaha. Second one is Al Ibaha. Permissibility. The author mentioned in two situations it becomes Ibaha. In two situations it becomes. إباحة. The first one is إذا ورد الأمر بعد حذر. If the command comes after a prohibition. If the command comes after prohibition. For example, Allah تبارك وتعالى He prohibited hunting. Allah said in the ayah غير محل الصيد وأنتم حرم. Allah in this verse He prohibited hunting whilst in the state of إحرام. And then Allah commanded, after the prohibition, Allah commanded the believers to hunt after they finish Hajj. Allah says, وَإِذَا حَلَلْتُمْ فَاسْطَادُوا Once you leave the state of Ihram, go and hunt. So here, فَيُحْمَلُ عَلَى الْإِبَاحَةِ We will say that this command, which is فَاسْطَادُوا Go and hunt. It's لِلْإِبَاحَةِ It shows permissibility that you can now hunt. That's what he said. Also another example for it is the prohibition of selling and buying after the second kula to the Jum'ah, second proclaim, second nida, the second nida um, after it, the prohibition that came from buying and selling on Friday. Didn't Allah not say in the ayah, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu idha nudiya li salati min yawmi al-jum'ati fas'au ila dhikri lahi وَدَرُوا الْبَيْعَ In this ayah, Allah Taala He said to us, يَا يَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Those of you who believe, إِذَا نُودِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ مِيَوْمِ الْجُمْعَةِ If the caller of prayer is done on Friday, فَاسْعَوْا إِلَى ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Run to the remembrance of Allah, وَدَرُوا الْبَيْعَ Stay away from buying and selling. You can't buy, nor can you sell. Because of the ayah, وَدَرُوا الْبَيْعَ Then Allah commanded it. After prohibiting it, when the Jum'ah finishes, what did Allah say? فَإِذَا قَضَيْتُمُ الصَّلَاةَ فَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهِ فَإِذَا, فإذا قُضِيَتِ الصَّلَاةُ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ فَإِذَا قُضِيَتِ الصَّلَاةُ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ So فَإِذَا قُضِيَتِ الصَّلَاةُ Allah would say فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Once the salah is done and established وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ Go out and look for the virtue of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَبْتَغُوا and فَانْتَشِرُوا Does that mean somebody has to stand inside the masjid and say to the people, you have to leave? Because Allah said, فَانْتَشِرُوا hmm? Now this فَانْتَشِرُوا, it's after a prohibition. Also, the prohibition of having sexual intercourse with your wife while she's on her menses. Did Allah, did Allah not say, فَاعْتَزِلُوا النِّسَاءِ فِي الْمَحِيضِ وَلَا تَقْرَبُوهُنَّ حَتَّى يَطُرْنَا 
leave and stay away from the women whilst they are on their menses. Stay away from them. And don't come close to them. Until they purify themselves. Until they, until they purify, until they pu- pu- purify themselves. So Allah said, فَعَتَّزِلُ النِّسَاءِ Stay away from the women. Prohibited. Then Allah commanded us. What did Allah say? فَإِذَا تَطَهَرْنَا فَأْتُوهُنَّ مِنْ حَيْثُ أَمَرَكُمُ اللَّهِ When they purify and they clean themselves, Allah says, فَأْتُوهُنَّ Come to them. مِنْ حَيْثُ أَمَرَكُمُ اللَّهِ From the place Allah, تبارك وتعالى, permitted for you. فَيُحْمَلُ عَلَى الْإِبَاحَةِ Now we say, فَأْتُوهُنَّ When a woman finishes her menses, that doesn't mean it's obligatory for everyone to have intimacy with her. It's لِلْ إِبَاحَة لِأَنَّ وَقَعَ بَعَدَ حَذَرِ Because it happened when? After a حَذَر لكن um, This is the view of Shaykh ibn Uthaymin and many of the Usuliyin. Shaykh ibn Uthaymin and many of the Usuliyin, they believe إِذَا وَرَدَ الْأَمْرُ بَعَدَ الْحَذَرِ يُحْمَلُ عَلَى الْإِبَاحَة they believe that if a command comes after a prohibition, it's for ibaha. It's what? Ibaha. Like in Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, ibn Kathir, al-Allama Muhammad al-Amin al-Shanqitiyu, and others, they hold a slight different opinion. They say, an al-amra, a command, بعد الحذر, after prohibition, يرد الشيء إلى حكمه السابق قبل الحذر. It goes back to what the ruling was before it happened. So if that thing was wajib, then the command will be wajib. And if that thing was uh, ibaha, then it goes back to ibaha. If that thing was, was mandub, it goes back to nidb. If that thing was wajib, it goes back to the wajib. وَمَا إِلَىٰ ذَلِكِ And they seem right. They seem, they seem right in that regard. Because we find some evidences of the Nusus al Um You can't reconcile between it unless you say that Qa'idah, the way that Al Amin al chose, Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Kathir, and others chose. That seems to be strongest. Um, the second form of Ibaha that the author Allah, mentioned is Ida Warad al Amru Jawab in Imayutahamu and No Mahadur. If a command comes to a if the command comes as a response to something that is suspected it was prohibited, like the statement of the Messenger وسلم, when he was asked في حجة الوداع in his final hajj, if you can do تقديم بعض أفعال الحج, some of the acts of hajj, some of the acts of hajj, can you place one before the other? The messenger said to the companion, if I'll do that, wala haraj, and there's no problem. There's no problem. The Sahabi thought that it was prohibited, Aslan. He thought it was prohibited, he thought it wasn't allowed. And the messenger gave him a response, the Prophet, but what did he say? If I'll do. He, if I'll here means you can do. Okay, because he asked about whether he can do it. So the Prophet, even that though he said, if I'll do, wala haraj, and there's no harm on you, it doesn't mean what? Go, oh, you have to do it, you can, no, no, it means you can't do that. You can't do that. The third type that the author, Rahimahullah, mentioned, and the third type that we're talking about here is, we mentioned al-nadb and al-ibaha. We finished the two types of al-ibaha. Okay? The third type, where the command, it leaves obligation. Um, the third type is, al-tahdeedu, when the warning comes. When a warning comes. Allah Ta'ala, what did he say in the ayah? اِعْمَلُوا مَا شِئْتُمْ Do as you wish. إِنَّوْ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بصير. Allah is one who knows everything which you do and he's aware of everything you do and he sees everything you do. So this ayah, اِعْمَلُوا مَا شِئْتُمْ إِنَّوْ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بصير. Does that mean Allah is commanding us to do whatever we want? This is a warning. It means, if, okay, do whatever you want. You can't do whatever you want. It's not actually a command to do it. It's a warning. It's like the other ayah, فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ Disbelief. Is Allah commanding us to disbelief? We say this is tahdeed. So فمن, how do we know it's a tahdeed? Because if you look at the ayat after it, you'll realize. The ayah before I mentioned, اعملوا ما شئتم do what you wish. 
He can see what you're doing. That's that, that part tells us it. فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ إِنَّا أَعْتَدْنَا لِظَالِمِنَا نَارًا أَحَاطَ أَحَاطَ بِهِمْ سُرَادِقُهَا That's also another إِنَّا أَعْتَدْنَا لِظَالِمِنَا نَارًا أَحَاطَ بِهِمْ سُرَادِقُهَا That shows us that it's a that shows us that it's a وَعِيدٌ It's a severe warning and that's the Qareena that shows us it when Allah says كُلُوا وَتَمَتَّعُوا قَلِيلًا and then what did Allah say after that إِنَّكُمْ مجرمون. Eat. And enjoy yourself for a period of time, for a small, short period of time. Enjoy yourself, O oh, disbelievers. Why? Because you are criminals. Do we say, kulu, eat? That they can eat whatever they want and they can enjoy themselves however they want? And Allah commanded them? No, because Allah said after that, you are criminals. In another ayah, Allah says, Qul ila nar. Enjoy yourselves. Ah. Enjoy yourselves. And then what did he say after that? He said, فَإِنَّ مَصِيرَكُمْ إِلَى النَّارِ Your final abode is the hellfire. Um, that's in regards to the command, can it leave obligation? And we said two. There are 35, he already mentioned two. What are the two? So he mentioned three. He mentioned three, Shaykh Ibn Uthaymin. What were the three? Aribaha. Those were the Amar Al Mutlaq leaving the what? The wujub, the obligation, and turning into either Alibaha or Nadb or a Tahdeed. What was the other t- discussion that we had yesterday? Al Amr Al Mutlaq. Does it show Al Fawriya or does it show Al Tarakhi? Does it show that you have to do it now or does it show that you have to do it after a period of time? صح? The Sheikh is now going into that again. Times when it happens that the command does not show fawriya. It doesn't show that you have to do it immediately, but it shows ila jawazi taraqi. You can delay it if you want to. And the example that the author, rahimahullah, gave is the qada of fasting. The qada of fasting. Fasting. We were told to do it, right? Didn't Allah not say, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَسُّمْ وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَاعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ The one who is sick and the one who is a traveler and of course the woman who is on a menses, what do they do? فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ Allah says, bring it back a time after. So bring it back is a command. It shows that as soon as Ramadan finishes, that that person has to bring it back straight away. صحيح? What made it leave al fawriya and took it away from فَعِدَّةُ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ What took it away from that? What took from it is the event that took place for Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها that she said I used to delay it for what? فَمَا أَسْتَطِعُ عَنْ أَقْضِيَهُ إِلَّا فِي شَعْبَانِ I used to delay it to Sha'ban and, and the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم he consented to that the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام consented to that so this is an example of uh, that the command in some issues it can leave what? Uh, it being immediate. And it can go towards uh, But the benefit that you take from this is that Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al Uthaymeen he mentioned that this is a situations when it can happen. But the asal to him is what? What's the default position? أن الأمر المطلق يقتضي الوجوب. Also, أن الأمر المطلق يدل على الفورية. That أن الأمر المطلق is الفورية and it's not التراخي. Like there are situations when that that goes. Then the author رحمه الله said ما لا يتم المأمور إلا به إذا توقف فعل المأمور به على شيء كان ذلك الشيء مأمورا به. فإن كان المأمور به واجبا كان ذلك الشيء واجبا وإن كان المأمور به مندوبا كان ذلك الشيء مندوبا مثال مثال الواجب ستر العورة فإذا توقف على شراء ثوب كان ذلك الشراء واجبا ومثال المندوب التطيب للجمعة فإذا توقف على شراء طيب كان ذلك الشراء مندوبا وهذه القاعدة في ضمن قاعدة أعم منها وهي الوسائل لها أحكام المقاصد فوسائل المأمورات مأمور بها 
ووسائل المنهيات منهي عنها when what has been commanded cannot be completely accepted with it so if an action that has been commanded is stopped because of something then that thing itself becomes commanded in order to fulfill the command and if it is recommended then the thing by default recommended then the thing is by default recommended an example of an obligation is the covering of someone's awrah part of the body that must be covered if you are prevented by doing so without certain clothes then buying those clothes become an obligation also an example of something recommended is the wearing of perfume on the day of jumu'ah ah. if it relies on buying perfume to carry it out then buying that perfume is likewise recommended this principle is part of a more general principle and that is the means follow the rulings of the of the purposes they are being used for so the means that are undertaken to fulfill obligations are themselves obligatory as are those things that are prohibited the means are also rendered unlawful the author rahimahullah goes into a qaida known as ma la yatimu al ma'mur bihi ma la yatimu al ma'mur illa bihi ما لا يتم المأمور إلا به فهو مأمور به. What I want إن شاء الله تعالى is before we go in is distinguish two types of قاعده where people confuse one another. The first one is the one that the author mentioned himself which is ما لا يتم المأمور به ما لا يتم المأمور إلا به فهو مأمور به. And a second قاعده which is ما لا يتم الأمر إلا به فليس مأمورا به. And those are two important principles that one needs to distinguish from another. The first one is أن أن ما لا يتم المأمور إلا به فهو مأمور به is anything where the obligatory thing, the thing that's commanded, cannot be done without this thing. The ultimate goal cannot be achieved unless this means is done. then this means becomes obligatory because of the objective that's been attained here. Example, satrul awra, to hide your private part. For other than your wife, is wajib. To cover your private part from other than your wife is obligatory, correct? You have to cover your private part from any, anyone other than your wife. This, if this can't be attained now, to cover your aura, you can't attain it, except to buy new clothing, then this buying of the clothing becomes obligatory. You have to buy the clothing. Salatul Jum'ah is wajibah. And a person can't go to the Salatul Jum'ah unless he walks. And the walking originally is not obligatory. You're allowed to walk if you want to and you're allowed to not walk, generally speaking. But you can't go to Jum'ah unless you what? Unless you walk. So now the walking becomes obligatory. Wiping over your hair is what? Is wajib for wudu. To wipe over your hair in wudu is wajib. And, but you can't do that unless you use your hands. Then using your hands becomes obligatory. Using perfume on your clothing or on your body for Jum'ah, or before the, you wear the ihram, is recommended. Okay? And by the way, pay attention. Placing the perfume before Jum'ah is your clothes and your body. Like in before the ihram, it's only your body, not your, not your clothing. You can't place perfume on the ihram clothing. Okay? Both of them are recommended. What about both of them is recommended? I mean, using perfume on your body before the ihram is recommended and using perfume on your body and your clothing before going to Jum'ah is recommended those two situations is recommended but a person can't do that recommended act unless he does what? unless he goes and he buys a perfume then buying a perfume becomes recommended because the ultimate goal is recommended using the siwak is recommended If you can't do the siwak, unless you buy a siwak, then buying the siwak becomes recommended. Dua ul istiftah in the prayer is recommended. 
If the person can't do it because of not knowing it, then it becomes knowing it and studying it and learning it becomes recommended. That's the qa'ida which is and the Shaykh Mahrahimullah mentioned that this actually is a, there's a bigger principle than this, which is which is a more general ruling. Why is it general? How is it general? Because is only restricted to the commandments. All of this we mentioned is command, right? Talab only. That's why I only mentioned wajib and mandub. Lakin al wasail la ahkam al maqasid also falls under the manhiyat, the prohibited things. So it's more general. The ma'mur is also in there, and also the manhiyat are in there. Because if something is haram, then whatever leads to it becomes haram. But that is not an na mala yatimu al ma'mur illa bihi. Fawa ma'mur bihi is only one form. Whereas al wasail la ahkam al maqasid is both. Does that make sense? Al wasail ahkam al maqasid, two things fall under it. What are the two things that fall under it? The things that you're commanded to do, whatever leads to it becomes obligatory. And the things that you're, recomm- recomm- com- you're commanded to do in a rec- recommended manner becomes, the means to it becomes recommended. So that's the al ma'murat. The second one is what? Al manhiyat, the things that you're prohibited from. The things that you're prohibited are two types, right? The muharramat and the makruhat. Sahih? Both of them, they fall under that. So al-wasail al-hakam al-maqasid is bigger. The second type that people tend to confuse it with is أَنَّ مَا لَا يَتِمُ الْأَمْرُ إِلَّا بِهِ فَلَيْسَ مَأْمُورًا بِهِ This command cannot be done except with something happening. Then this thing happening, you're not commanded to come with it. You're not commanded to come with it. Whether you, have, whether you have the ability or you don't have the ability, it doesn't matter. For example, Salatul Dhuhri, the command of the Salatul Dhuhri cannot be done unless what? Bi illa bi zawali shamsi. Unless the, the zenith of the sun. And you're not commanded to come with that. For example, the commandment of zakat is what? It's connected to if it reaches the nisab. If it reaches the amount, you're not commanded to come with that. It's not upon you to reach to gather money so you can make it reach to, to, to make it reach the amount. No. And etc. So that's the difference between and also that's the difference between the two. And inshallah ta'ala, we're going to, pro, we're going to sorry, conclude there, uh, the Amr. And next week, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to do the Nahi. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaytan, and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayh.